Welcome back to our channel, we're happy to see you again. Today we'll be making our first book review. That moment you'll be waiting for is finally here and whatever place to record this video than the beach. So first of all, we will be making a review without the spoilers and then we'll be making a review with the spoilers. So we'll make an alert before we enter to the spoiler part. So without further ado, let's start. So the book we're reviewing is Little Monsters by Cara Thomas. This is a YA thriller and mystery. It's about a girl named Casey that she moves to a town because she has never met her father before but she has some trouble with her mother so she goes to live with her dad and then well she meets uh, Jade and Bailey. Casey, Jade and Bailey do everything together except that one day they don't invite Casey to a party and the next day Bailey disappears and it goes around how Bailey disappeared and where is she now so Casey's trying to find out who did this and where is Bailey. First of all, what I really like about this book is that there are several point of views. At, at some point, there are a lot of flashbacks and you don't know who to trust, okay? So, for example, at the end of the book, you have the idea that everyone is mentally disrupted, right? There is no one who you can trust, really, and I really like how Cora Thomas portrayed each of the characters and how every sequence was so perfectly and so fast-paced since the first page, you were so intrigued to the last page of the book. I really liked the writing style because even though there are a lot of point of views, you really, really get attached to all the characters, even though they are not even trustful. And for me, I thought when I first saw this, I thought it was going to be another like mystery and whatever. And to be honest, since it's a YA mystery, there's not a lot that I like this one, I think. So I really like how intense and suspenseful it is. I really like the mystery throughout the book. And I didn't think that it was going to be like this. So it really impressed me, to be honest. I didn't have these high expectations of the book. And when I finished reading it, it blew me away. So I think that he did a pretty great job. As he said, the writing is really authentic. I think that the characters, you really, although Cara Thomas is not an teenager and Casey is, well you can see that the perspective of Casey being a teenager it really feels like that and how it feels to be a teenager at some point because she's she's jealous that Bailey and Jay didn't invite her to some things that they did and so you can see that it really feels like it's a teenager speaking to you, so I really like that. One thing that I like that is even though she has a lot of problems with her mother, you can see this connection with her stepmother that she really loves Casey and well, she, the connection with her father is so bad they don't talk a lot but she has this special connection with her stepbrother and stepsister I think there's a special bond with this character As he said, I think that in YA novels we do not see so much the family interaction and I think that Casey and her stepmother, although they don't have the perfect relationship she tries to have a good relationship with her stepbrother, Andrew, and her stepsister, Lauren. So I think that's really important to see that interaction with families and how it sometimes it's hard to be with your family and the struggles you have and you, how to learn to get over them. So I really like that aspect of this book. So if you haven't read this book, I really recommend it to you because if you want to get in, intrigued from the start of the book and until the end, and have the, this feeling that you don't know what's going to happen until the end, then you should read it. It's so good. Now we're going to start the review with the spoilers, so if you haven't read it, bye. <laughs> but come back on, uh, after you read it, so we can discuss this with you guys. First of all, the ending was really unexpected. I think that for both, I read it first, then he read it later than me, and we were both shocked with the ending. I think that you never see that coming, some people did, but I was wondering, I thought it was Jade, and yeah, at the end it was Jade, kind of, but Lauren killed Bailey. I think that's really messed up, to put a kid in that situation where she's so scared she has to do this. So I think that it was not Lauren's fault entirely, because Jade pushed her to the edge to make this. So I think that the ending was like, really just... I was really surprised. I did not see that coming from a YA author or a YA book. Uh, well, I thought that it was Ashley, uh, Casey's stepmother, because <laughs> there is a lot of part of this book that, 
or at some point there's a knife missing in her kitchen and well she starts acting weird. I thought like well maybe she killed Bailey because of some of the problems but well it seemed unreal to me but the end, the end Lauren killing another girl it's another unreal thing I think that's just so messed up some big girl trying to push a little one to kill someone. The thing that I really liked was that you have this view of Bailey, like with the, with the diaries that she writes, you can see how Bailey felt. You can see that there's mental struggle within Bailey because she had problems. She thought that Casey was falling in love with her stepbrother. I think that's super messed up, like what the hell. <laughs> but Bailey realized at the end that she needed help because in her diaries you can see that she's struggling she hates Casey, like with all her heart she hates her but when the book starts, Bailey, Jade and Casey do this ritual in an old house in, a, in the old house that was near Casey's house and I really like how you think that it's just like a teenager thing that like they want to do something stupid and at the end it's kind of like it makes sense at the end because when you start reading the book, you realize that Bailey did this because she wanted to kill Casey during the ritual with Jade. And you don't see this. You don't see this coming. You don't put this together. But it's at the end that you realize that, oh my god, they did this because they wanted to kill Casey. I think that it was pretty clever that Lauren wanted to go to the ritual because it involved her. It just created this thing where Jade started to think, oh my god, I can use Lauren. To do this. Also, I think there's a plot hole for me. I don't know if you've seen it or this. I don't know. That they're at this old house and there are footsteps outside, and that's why it's it all started up because Lauren got scared and well, she was acting weird after that. Yeah. And until the end of the book, you don't know like what are those steps if there was an animal or a person around them. I really would like to know if there was a person over there because it all started from that. From that point, Lauren being scared of those footsteps, and well, you think that she's having some trauma with that, but really, it's not about the footsteps, it's about Jake pushing her to do something she didn't want. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool that uh, Kara Thomas involved Lauren in this to distract you that she was the reason Bailey disappeared because you think, oh my god, she's just scared and she had this psychological problem because she was really scared from the night of the ritual but it's not that, you realize that at the end this teenager wants to convince a little girl to kill another girl because there was supposedly in the place that did the, the ritual it was the house of a lady called the Red Woman I think that Kara Thomas did a great job distracting you from the real thing because at first you think, oh my god, it has to be something paranormal because they did this ritual and the red woman. Kara Thomas really does a great job trying to distract you from the real person who killed Bailey. And so you start to wonder, is it Andrew? Is it the guy that invited them to the party? Was it Ashley that Luis Guillermo thought it was her yeah. stepmother? You start to wonder. That's what I really like. You start to wonder about everyone. Like you think, is this one? Is this other person and I think that's a great job that an author can distract you from the real thing. Also I like that at some point uh, we're going with these flashbacks of Bailey and she's writing in her diary and Casey tells one thing in her point of view and then Bailey writes something mm -hmm. else about Casey in the same situation too so you start to wonder who is the bad one here and I want to say like, I want to think that Casey was the bad one because of, ba of what Bailey and Jade said about her and then Casey did another thing and I was like no <laughs> she's the good one and mm -hmm. well during the whole book I was doubting who was the good one who was the bad one so I really like about this one because you never had something for sure until the end of the book. Talking about good and bad I think that all the characters had layers because that's how we are if they were flat characters we were, it would be boring it would be eh. but each character has a problem. Ro Lauren has problems, Andrew has problems, Casey, Bailey, Jay, and sometimes Ashley and Casey's father has problems. And I think that's real life. We have problems, we have layers and layers. And so that, that's what I 
really appreciate it that you could see this layers and how different each character is. A character that I really liked, but a lot of people, they hate him. I don't know, it's Burke, the detective that was running with the investigation. I don't know why I like him, because his way of investigating things, and he was pushing so hard on Casey because he knew she had some information, and he was doing well. He was doing so good his job. He wanted to know who the person was, and after they noticed that Lauren killed Bailey, Berg was always calm and said, okay, we're going to deal with your parents, we're going to talk about this, we're going to take her to a psychologist. So I think he was one of the persons that had like his mind so established of his goal of finding who killed Bailey, that he did a really good job. He never got so messed up in like other characters that I really like about this. At the end, the conclusion really, like it messed up with my mind to think that a little kid like Lauren, that she's innocent, she's sweet, and you realize that she has this love for her sister, Casey. And you see that this little girl is capable of doing this, but you start to wonder, okay, is she really bad? Did she really deserve this? Like, at the end, you don't... I, I didn't hate her, because she's a little kid, and Jade, Jade, I think she's the one that's the most messed up of all the characters because she pushed this little girl so far, scaring her and Jade painted herself as the red woman and she started to tell her that if she didn't kill Bailey, she was going to kill her. So I think that that's a really huge problem, a psychological problem. And Bailey, she, had, she wanted to kill Casey at the beginning, but then she realized that she was messed up and she wanted help and she asked her mother um, for help. And at the end, Jade wanted to do it. Jade alone wanted to kill Casey, Jade alone pushed Lauren to do this. So I think that Jade is a real problem here, not Bailey, not Lauren. Yeah, and it's so cool because of all the characters, Jade was the one I less expected him from. Because, uh, well, you don't see her anger. I saw a lot of Bailey's anger, but I didn't see a lot of Jade's anger. She was always hiding her emotions, and I think that's more dangerous than showing your emotions, like just hiding yeah. and hiding and then exploding. Also, there are two characters that, uh, one is Megan, there are two, two girls that they don't get along with Casey, but at the end they try to tell her things about Bailey and they are so important to this reading. For me, they were so important because it's not just black and white because they saw everything in a different angle. Things that I didn't like from the book is that I think there were some pointless clues because when they did the ritual at the house, they used this object to make the ritual. And Casey goes near near town and she finds this store where they sell that same object. And I thought there was going to be more, more about this object, more about this store. And I felt it was pointless. Just like to distract Bailey, but I did not find anything interesting with that after all. Also in that store, Casey meets a gypsy and well she tells a lot about Casey, she starts, she starts telling her that she has a secret and she needs to get that secret out of her and you don't know more about that gypsy, like she, Casey and the gypsy, they meet like two times and well they wanted to start building something with the gypsy and this whole investigation and the murder but you don't see that much, you yeah. just they introduce the gypsy she starts telling Casey a lot of interesting things and they just get rid of her. And I would love to know more about the gypsy and how she could have added a lot to that story. The aspect of the book I did not like, it was that you see that Casey has some struggles before she moved to that town. She has these anger problems and she's like, oh my god, I have these anger problems. I cannot let these anger problems show to other people, like I have to keep it in. And you see that she has like two episodes of anger and that's it throughout the book. And so I think that if you want to make that statement and want to talk about that specific problem, you should have put it more throughout the book so it doesn't feel forced. And I don't know, I just don't feel like it added anything key to the novel. But I don't know, character development or just to add another layer to Casey. But I think that if you want to prove that point, that she has anger problems, you should, you should have put it more throughout it. That's it, that's our main points and ideas of this book. And like I said, I think that 
it opened a discussion to some problems or illness that people can have and they might seem like oh they're just teenagers and they're doing like stupid things and they're uh, nonsense they're getting over it but you can see that Jade wanted to push this over she wanted to kill someone and I think that's really a problem and I think that's important discussion that sometimes we as teenagers or not just teenagers but kids or adults have these problems and we should not ignore them we should ask for help we should see you know, that people struggle with different things and I think that's an important discussion to be open and talk about since we're really into Harry Potter and as, as you can read our channel name it's Fish and Flick Reads we really like Harry Potter so we made this rating, rating system, system. Um, so in Hogwarts they gave you house points for if you did something in the year for your house right so if we like a book we're going to add points like house points if we don't like it we're going to take house points so since we're Hufflepuff we're going to like if we say okay we add this book five house points we're adding five house points to Hufflepuff so I don't know for me I give it four out of five house points because like I said I found some pointless clues that did not add up and I didn't like that they didn't develop more cases anger problems so that's why I give it a 4 out of 5 house points in this book 4.5 house points out of 5 because there are some problems with this book where it got me so intrigued and it didn't bother me as much as interested so I, that's why I didn't take away a lot of points, I just point five points because I really liked this book and it was so fast pacing that I added up to all the mistakes. Okay. So if you if you want a mystery or a thriller, well, you already read this if you're here in the spoiler section, but if you already read this, you can see that I think it's pretty awesome. I think it's pretty cool to be a YA novel and be a mystery and the ending is so unexpected. I really liked it. So thank you for being part of our first first book review and this, since this is our first book review we could have made some mistakes or we did not talk about something or we missed something yeah. and we're learning and we love to learn if you have any uh, comments about us any improvements we should make anything that we make good or bad please leave it in the comments below we would love to hear it from you guys so thank you and I remember it's all about the switch and the flick and please switch and flick here down the subscribe button and give us a thumbs up and leave in the comments what book we should be reviewing next and see you next time. See you next time. Bye! Bye.